Hi FlossTube, it's me, Andrea, the Stitchy Bookworm, and it's Thursday, May 9th, and I'm coming here with my second FlossTube video. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone for the res like all the wonderful comments. Like I was actually, it was actually a little overwhelming for me. It was like I wasn't expecting that much, like that many subscribers and like that many comments in kind of that short period of time. Um, but I've been reading all the comments, I've been trying to comment as much as I can, and I appreciate all the shout-outs I've been given, um, Pam and Steph from Just, Just Keep Stitching, Michelle Bendy, um, Abby Top Knot Stitcher, if I'm missing anyone, I, I, I really, really do appreciate it, like it's just been very overwhelming, but I've been definitely feeling the love, and I'm very appreciative for that, so, um, yeah, so it's kind of my motivator to, like, get a second one out. Um, I wanted to get one out before StitchCon, so I had a, like a couple videos under my belt before I go there as a floss tuber, so that'll be super exciting. Um, as I said last week, um, last video, um, this week I'm going to be showing um, all my finishes. I, a majority of them, like I am kind of might be leaving some out. Um, but I do have a new start, and Something I haven't been stitching as much between, um, I haven't been working on as many projects between last video and this one. So, yeah, um, first of all, um, I did some progress on my full coverage, not as much. Um, it's Spooked from Charting Creations, artwork by Bonnie White. Um, I pretty much got like a few hundred stitches there and like a hundred right there um I just pretty much finished my April my April stitches but I haven't done any May ones but ideally I would like to finish this page so I have a page I haven't finished by the end of May but I start a class soon so we'll see how that goes <laughs> but yeah still loving this one um I might bring this to StitchCon just to have with me, but I don't know if I'll work on it much. It's just so intense. Um, okay, now I have a really fun new start. I'm excited to show you guys. Um, th my birthday was this past in April, and this was my birthday start. Like I didn't start it on my actual birthday because I was busy, but started a few days later, and um, it's called Magic Is On The Way by Lola Lada Shop on Etsy. And I'm going to insert the picture right there. Um, I'm going to have to go in and practice editing, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but um, I'm stitching it on um, 28 count sampler gold from Color and Cotton, like Lugana. And I'm obsessed with it right now. I've actually made quite a bit of progress. Um, I have that um, right there is like the main bulk of like color in the entire thing. I have to fill in tons of white there in, in the stairs. But then after that, it's a lot of kind of black work up in this region. But I'm obsessed with this. Um, that like the back stitching of that like I have the before picture on my Instagram but it was incredibly tedious but I love how it turned out like it just the back stitching just totally like brings it to life I kind of wung it in the hair region just because I couldn't see anything I just hoped his face didn't turn out weird but yeah um ideally I wanted to kind of get this done before stitch gun so I could have it on the brag table but I don't know as I still have to stitch my stitch gun small but absolutely love this one okay now um, that's pretty much all I worked on since then I did start my stitch con small but I'm um, probably not going to show that until the next video and um, I do have a little bit of haul I can show not much but I got some cute stuff First of all. Sorry about the but I finally got this um, Barbara Anna um, Christmas is coming. And I don't really stitch a lot of Christmas things, but I was absolutely like in love with this. And I feel like it's like 
this is Christmassy, but it doesn't have to be. It could be just like a little old man riding a snail, dragging a whole village behind him. Like it's just so weird, but so cute. Like I'm so excited to start this. Hashtag tiny rider cell, Michelle, Michelle Bendy. So cute. Um, then I got a new Mill Hill kit. Um, Ghost Town has all my thing things I love about spooky and creepy houses. So that's awesome. I've I'm like I kind of hoard Mill Hill kits. I've only stitched a few, which you'll see some of them today. But I really like things like they're small and yet they have everything you need. But I just need to stitch more of them because I actually I might have to show my stash of these at some point. But those are a lot of fun. Now um the last haul I have is um Abby Top Knot Stitcher. Um she had a little pop up sale for needle minders and I snagged a couple of moons. Yeah I got those two moons. They're super cute. Like I love needle minders like that like kind of flat wooden ones. And then this is one that Jam threw in her cute little kitty cat. Love that one. Yeah, I can't wait to use these. Okay. Now, we're going to go right into my finishes. Um, I kind of left out some of my, like, older ones. Because, like, I don't know, it's like, I might show them at some point, but it's just kind of, like, random stuff on Ada. But I've decided I'm going to show my very, very first one. Because we've all started somewhere and it's kind of interesting to see my very first one compared to everything else that I have done. It's this little one right here. It's a kit from Michaels. And yeah, it's kind of a mess. Like the back doesn't look too great. But it's kind of what started it all. Like, I, my initial interest in cross stitching was I wanted to stitch inappropriate things with flower borders. And, um, usually when I kind of get an idea like that to do a craft, I will do it for two weeks and then abandon it, but this kind of, it stuck, and I've been doing this for over two years now, so this is what started it all. Okay. And it's funny, it's like, I've stitched, like, one, like, subversive thing, but now it's like, that's just not my interest area anymore, because I've, like, been introduced to so many other designs that are really detailed, like, but... Those are still fun, but it just it's not really something I'm interested in at the moment. Um, the next one is this my first stiatch along. Um, so the fabric is taped, and I've learned not to do that anymore. But it's there's enough excess fabric I can easily just cut off the tape agent region. Yeah. Um, as for me and my house, we shall serve Cthulhu. Um, since this was like the beginning of like me stitching, I wasn't really confident to kind of create my own thing. Like I did change the colors of the house, like the house was originally solid blue, but I, know, I thought it was kind of funny, Cthulhu. There's that, and this is on um, 16 count antique white Ada. Actually, this was like too stiff for my liking and it's Kind of miserable to stitch so yeah I still have that um let me see next one up is um my first mill hill kit and now a thing with these a lot of my finishes they're not really a lot of them are ffo'd um because it's like i'm still kind of like learning how to do a lot of that stuff um but, um, yeah, like I still want, I want to learn how to sew. Like I've had a, I've, I have a fabric hoarding problem. Like I have tons of fabric, like for sewing, but I don't know how to sew yet. But I feel like if I put in a lot of money on something, I'll have to like learn how to do it eventually. <laughs> like it's my mindset. Okay. So this is, um, a Mill Hill, um, it's called Moonstruck. And I absolutely loved stitching this. I'd say that this is definitely like my first full coverage. But I love all like, the different colors in there. And I think for this, for finishing, I might just get one of those standard Mill Hill frames that they have. But yeah, but I absolutely love stitching this. It's a lot of fun. And like, it's hard to see, but the beads like around the cat are kind of like, they kind of look like oil slick, kind of like holographic a little bit. 
but yeah, that one's a lot of fun. Um, okay, the next one up is something that I actually FFO'd like myself. And I took a lot of inspiration from Priscilla and Chelsea on this one. Oh, it's Outlander from Clouds Factory. It's stitched on 13 count, no, 14 count um, Fiddler's Cloth Ada. And I stitched it um, over, well, I stitched it with three strands because, um, except Myrta's hat is stitched with two, but I wasn't liking the coverage. But then when I started stitching everything in three strands, I just regretted it. But yeah, I'm really happy how it turned out. Um, and for this, I mounted the stitching on the sticky board and then this frame, like the back of it pops out and I wrapped it with um, fabric I got from Amazon that's kind of like Outlander themed. Now like um, Outlander, it wasn't originally like a thing that I thought I would like. Um, Working in a bookstore, I kept seeing, like, the books a lot and then, like, the TV show, so I thought I would give it a try. And then, um, I started reading the books and, like, I finished them all within a year. And I read, like, from first four, I, like, read the book, but then, like, the rest of them I did audiobook and kind of listened while I was stitching because they're, they're kind of slower. But, yeah, I absolutely love this. Um, I think what draws me out under, I like the kind of, like, the time travel -y bits. Which is like it's subtle, but um, just like when like they're in, you're kind of fully immersed in like the 18th century, um, and then suddenly um, someone like Claire, like they mention something like from present day. It's a little jarring, but I I really love stuff like that. But yeah, I love how little Fergus is just so much littler than everyone else. absolutely love doing this and I'm really happy how it turns out it's hanging usually hanging up back there so but that will go up there okay next up okay so this next one is the first thing I've ever done on linen it's frosted pumpkin stitcheries black hat society and I uh, I kind of forced myself to kind of go the linen route just because I wanted to try it but it's like dark linen which is like 28 count echo from picture picture this plus it was off to a very rough start but once I got the hang of it like there's kind of no going back from there like I absolutely loved it but yeah it's super cute um all of the lace all around the hat like I love it but it's so tedious to to stitch but I'll probably do something with this at some point. I've been seeing a lot of like no sew cubes, which would be very simple, but right now it's just kind of in a storage box in my under the bed bin. But yeah. Um next up. Okay, so the next one I don't have with me. And it so I'm gonna insert a picture here. Um, it's my second Mill Hill kit. Um, it's the Queen Anne house. And um, I gave it to my grandmother in Mississippi. Um, obviously, I'm such a, like, I'm obsessed with Victorian houses, so I loved everything about that. Um, I had lots of fun stitching it. And I finished it in a, a Mill Hill frame. And I kind of backed it with um, foam board and kind of put the framing to like tacks or whatever they're called inside. But yeah, but I absolutely love this one. Um, next up is one I actually had professionally framed. Um, it's Pretty Little DC from Satsuma Street. This I stitched as a gift for my mom and dad because they met in DC. And originally I wanted to get it for the anniversary, but it just took me so long. And then it, um, my mom knew I was stitching it, but then it got to a point where I just didn't tell her that I've resumed working on it and I was just like I, I, I finished it in secret and then I had a frame and I gave it to her a couple Christmases ago but we kind of went for kind of a, a worn an old frame kind of like a worn wood frame yeah very happy with this how it turned out and it is on um 
18 count uh, Fiddler's Cloth Ada. Yeah. Um, yeah, the next one I don't have with me as well. This was my um, small for StitchCon, and I'm going to insert a picture right here. Um, it's Fox and Grapes um, from Aesop's Fables from um, Veronique uh, and Ginger. I think I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Uh, her fa Fables and fa Fairy Tales to Cross Stitch book, which is like fantastic. Um, I can't really remember the fabric I stitched it on, but uh, I mounted on, on a wooden sign from um, Michael's. And I used, followed um, Vana's, Vana the Twisted Stitcher's um, cording tutorial and did that cording on around the edge. And um, Darla, KY Stitcher on Instagram, is the one that got it. And she has a wood, for Christmas, she had a woodland animal Christmas tree and she put it on there and it just looked adorable. Like, I was so happy to see it, like, and it's being put to use like that. It was, it looked, it looked fantastic. Um, yeah, um, okay. Next up um, is my Pride and Joy. And it's massive, but I don't have it with me right now as it'd be impossible to show. So I have actually a video I'm gonna insert right here. So this is The Time Traveler by Joan Elliott. She is stitched on 28 Count Lugana in Wonderlust by Fiberlicious. Um, I completed this in two months somehow. I think I just obsessively worked on it and nothing else. So it stitched up rather quickly. Um, it's stitched all in the Call for Colors, but any of the original Krynik, I switched over to Petite Treasure Braid, which made it stitching much easier. Lots of beads, and then there's one over one skin. But I absolutely loved stitching this project. However, those beads were incredibly frustrating to put on there. But I absolutely loved how it turned out. And then I felt like it needed a very fancy frame, so it's a closer look up at the frame. Yeah, this is pretty much my pride and joy, and I'm incredibly happy with it. Um, but yeah, I'm incredibly happy with the time traveler, and I had so much fun stitching it. I have no idea how I finished it in two months. Um, Lots of obsessive stitching on my part, and I just couldn't stop. Um, let me see. Okay. The next one, um, I'm really happy with this one. It's super cute. Um, it's this little guy. Um, it's Festive Little Fobs Beekeeping Edition from Heartstring Samplery. Um, none of the col colors are called for and there was a spot for initials since but I left that out because those were done one over one and this whole thing is I did it one over one and it's on 28 count um, beehive even weave from fabric flare and I got it in um, a B edition of stitchy box and I got um this is actually a little octagon no, hexagon um, container that came in the stitchy box as well and I kind of mounted it on the t lid and then this is some brick rack that I don't remember where I got that from but I'm really happy about this it's like I could probably use it as a little ore container or right now it just kind of displays displayed on the mantle but super cute Okay, so the next one, I'm going to have to provide some context for this one. 
because it's weird. And sometimes I questioned why I did this, but um, so I'm gonna go off on a little tangent because I do feel like I have to provide a bit of context. So before I even show it, I have to, I'm gonna explain some things. Let me get here. So for the past few years, I've been participating in something called Gishwiz. It's now known as Gish, and it stands for the greatest international scavenger hunt the world has ever seen. And it's been, it was created by Misha Collins from Supernatural. And pretty much what it is, is um, it's a worldwide scavenger hunt and you're kind of, you're with teams, like I'm on a team of like people that like I've never really met in person. Like I'm sometimes I'm like one of my friends from work, like he joins on with me and participates. But um, yeah, I've, I haven't really met most of these people. They're all over the, like the country and we just communicate on Facebook group. And we do these tasks. Like each year, um, a list of tasks are released, and um, they're they're really weird. Um, and some of them seem impossible, but sometimes people still manage to do them, and it's kind of mind blowing. Um, it's a lot of it kind of like creativity based, and uh, then there's some where it's um, kind of doing good for the world, like um, raising money for charity or um, just like spreading kind of joy and just kind of making the world a little nicer, weirder place. Um, the first year I ever did it, um, just to let you know how weird the tasks could be, one was um, I had to show how well I was at crafting objects out of artichokes. I made an artichoke bikini. And then second year, I had to craft, I didn't have to, but I just, it's like what I wanted to do, um, an ornamental headpiece out of kale. Just one piece of kale. I could only use one piece. I wasn't allowed to say the word kale because that's a banned word in Gish because it's weird. Um, and every year they have a coffee table book where like people kind of could vote on what gets in there and just like kind of like a yearbook of what was done. And I, for the year that I had the kale headpiece, I made the coffee table book. Right there. And I went to a Supernatural convention this past summer, and um, I just kind of wanted to show Misha in person, and I got his stamp of approval on it. And then he kind of laughed at it, because he, he says he forgets all the weird things he makes us do. So yeah. And um, this will get back to stitching, I promise. It's just a little context. Um, then, okay, I'm going to read one of the tasks, because it makes me laugh every time I read it, is never judge a book by its cover or bread by its shape. Bake bread or cookies into the shape of something you would definitely not want to eat. We hate to have to say this every year, but pornographic pastries will resu result in docked points. And then this is what that person did. So yeah, it's, like, it's a lot of creativity. Um, um, this past year, was, one was like, get a tattoo of yourself getting a tattoo. And one of my teammates did, and it was like really awesome. It was like a really good tattoo. And it was like really cute. Okay, which brings me... Um, to this year, like this past year of skish, um, which results in cross stitching. There was a task this past year that was, um, let me see, create a handmade replica of a widely known website homepage in Needlepoint. And I was really conflicted with this one because I know Needlepoint and cross stitch is technically different, but I kind of went in under the assumption that they kind of did an umbrella term, like uh, used a needlepoint as an umbrella term. And I figured that there would be other people doing cross stitch as well. So I did Google, but I decided to be clever with it and type some, have something written in the search bar, which is related to another task. Um, it's not, I couldn't get points for like two different tasks, but I just kind of like making a joke. Um, another, the second task that I was kind of referencing is um, get Mari Povich, Dr. Phil, Montel Williams, or Lauren Lake to announce that Misha Collins is not or is Alex, Alex Calvert's biological father. And Alexander Calvert plays Jack on Lucifer. He plays the son of Satan. And there's this inside joke that him and Misha look like they're related. So uh, fans actually rallied and like they sent all these things. And Lauren Lake actually did this segment where she kind of... It, it's hilarious. Like y If you Google it, um, it's like Misha Collins and Alexander Calvert, Lauren Lake, um, 
where she kind of announces it, but there's a little twist there. Um, so, which, like, for that challenge, since it's, like, it's a matter of, like, who dis deciding which team gets the points, like, if your team made an effort and, like, tweeted to these people, and you, you show you that you did, um, you get, get points, like, my team, um, one of my teammates, like, wrote a song to the tune of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody about this to try to get, like, a fraternity test done, and it was hilarious. So people got, get, like, really creative, and it just, it's weird. Um, so here is my cross-stitch, and I had a Google search, are Misha Collins and Alex Calvert related, GISH 2018, and I found the Google, like, thing somewhere online, this is, like, on 28 Count Monaco, but, and then I just, I got the text, um, from, I got this text kind of from one of my pattern books, but I kind of freehanded the little search bar right there. But yeah, but it's weird and kind of like, I don't under, I don't know if I'm going to do anything with it, but it, it makes me laugh. So, and I just spent a whole day on this. It's, the things that you do in GISH is kind of, it's, it's fun. Like, um, signups are still going on. It's going to be in July when it takes place. It's a full week and it's, People lose sleep over it, and I don't know how people manage to get as many tasks done, but the winning team gets to go on a, a trip with Misha. Like, this past year, for, for the last year, they went to New Zealand. And, um, yeah. So usually they, they have a lot of fun with that, but the winning teams, like, I have no idea how they get so many done, and it's, it's not exactly, they also kind of want, like, quality over quantity. Like, you have to be creative, and if they say that they want you to do a some like record a video of you doing a somersault with pizzas pieces of pizza on you. You can't use fake pizza or like cutouts. It has to be pizza. Like you can't really interpret interpret what they're saying unless there's one task that just says beard garden. And like do with that with what you will and it's it's a lot of fun. Like it's really silly and I, every year I kind of try to say I'm gonna, I'm going to go out in my comfort zone. I'm going to do some of these out in public but I never do. But for the kale headpiece, I actually went to a lake because I really wanted a water backdrop. <laughs> um, but yeah, that one's a lot of fun. And just really random. So it's a long tangent, but yeah, I highly recommend Gish. It's a, lot, a good way to be creative. And I'm participating this year, so if you follow me on Instagram, like I can't talk about it. Like until after the hunt's over, like, I can't say what tasks I'm doing, but I could be very vague about it, and, yeah, and uh, sometimes I'm more than willing to, like, make outfits out of food, so, whatever happens, okay, let me see, the next one is, um, one I did for my dad as a surprise, it's Blackbird Designs, yellow submarine and this is on 32 count vintage cedar plank um, linen and it's pretty much all the color for colors except for this the dark blue that's color and cotton Prussian blue because I think the color for was um, um, gentle arts um, tin bucket and I just for some reason I just wanted that to be like blue so I changed that and I'm really happy with how it turned out and this is professionally framed as well you kind of got like a kind of like worn like kind of gold ish looking insert for the frame and then kind of got a simple wood frame but yeah managed to keep this a secret from my dad and i'm really happy with how it turned out next up is okay. this one is Halloween delivery by Plum Street Samplers, and um, it's on twenty eight count um, Monaco that I coffee tea dyed myself, and I I'm absolutely love it in love with this and like when I kept seeing this all over the place I knew I had to stitch it but until I got the pattern, I didn't notice 
that the carriage is being driven by an invisible little man. And I meant to bring this up here with me. Um, let me see. Um, Away We Ride by Blackbird Designs. Like I know that they're, these are two different um, uh, designers, but I like to n imagine that this little crow drawn carriage in the house with all the witchy windows, I like to imagine that they exist within the same universe because they're spooky and kind of weird, but I love it. Yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna, how I'm gonna finish this, but I feel like it kind of needs like an ornamental kind of like gothic looking frame, like maybe black, but I'll figure that out. Then, this is my most recent finish. Um, it is Antique Locks and Keys by Shakespeare's Peddler. It's stitched on 36 count autumn from under the sea fabrics. And I used, I didn't use called for colors, but this is um, a limited edition Gloriana silk that I got from a stitchy box. And it's really hard to do, get, like, do this justice, but it's kind of like, it's like a dark, deep, kind of like red color, kind of like maroony. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, once I learn how to sew, I think a, like a little pillow could be really cute, but I still need to learn how to sew. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that's, the most recent finish I have. So now we're gonna kind of shift over me talking about books. Um, also this portion, I'm probably gonna geek out a lot and kind of go off on a little bit of tangent. Um, I did finish a book. Um, it is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. And I got this in Owlcrate, like I April's Owlcrate. Um, and the thing about Owlcrate, it's a monthly subscription service for YA books. Like you get one book and then um, like three to five bookish items. And I thought like, since I'm kind of like a picky reader, I felt like YA fantasy was kind of a safer bet than like an adult bookish box. And plus like, I just, also with Owlcrate, like they do have, um, items for kind of books that have, that are adult books, but they have a crossover appeal, but like books by V.E. Schwab, like Vicious, like that's an adult book, but it kind of, a lot of like young adults really enjoy it. Um, this one, also the cool thing about Alcrate, the book, the covers are exclusive to Alcrate. Like the original cover for this one is white with kind of like a blue city. And they always come with letters from, from the author. And they always come signed. And this book is about, there's three main characters. Um, the main character, Nadia, she um, is a cleric who could talk to gods. And um, there's a prince named Seraphin that's kind of after her. And he's like from like opposing sides. Like there's a war going on. And he's a blood mage. And... Um, his magic is like, they carry magic books with them that they rip out a page and kind of like dip their own blood into it and that's how they do their magic. And then um, there's a monster who's kind of from the opposing side as well, from Nadia. And um, he's he's kind of the love interest. It's kind of like a star-crossed lovers, like forbidden romance thing if you're into that. But um, they kind of they kind of all come together with like the sole purpose to stop the war. And um, it's a very brutal book. Like it's very, very bloody, but it's. it took me a little bit to get into it, but once I did, um, I really enjoyed it. And this is like, um, there. this is going to be a series, so I'm excited for the next one. And then a cool thing about Alcrate is um, the publisher of the book that's in the each box usually will throw in a promo item. And this promo item is actually one of my favorites I've gotten so far. Um, it's like how, like, books have kind of maps in the pages, like this is the map. Okay, it's a little cloth, so I might hang this up. Plus it's good that I've read the book, so like, I could actually show this off and say I read it. <laughs> but yeah, it's really awesome. And I might um, 
I could possibly like in the future maybe do unboxings on this channel as kind of like separate videos since I'm kind of trying to do a, like a little um, floss tube kind of um, book tube hybrid of sorts. Um, but yeah, but I really enjoyed that book. Um, okay, so the next one is my book Spotlight. And I'm going to be geeking out a lot about this. Um, um, it's my favorite graphic novel. Like, I haven't really, I haven't read many graphic novels, but this is my favorite one. It is, ooh, something dropped. It's the Lock and Key series by Joe Hill, illustrated by Gabriel Rodriguez. And for those that don't know, whoop, this is why I can't have nice things. For those that don't know, um, Joe Hill is the son of Stephen King, and he does write horror. Um, the nice thing about Lock and Key is it's only six volumes. Like, the main story is six volumes, and it's done. So it's like it's kind of low commitment as opposed to like The Walking Dead or like there's other things like it's and it's already wrapped up like you could like jump in and you don't everything's right here except they do have like the universe is so like large they, they do have kind of spin-offs and kind of like standalone it like issues but what this series is about one second It is, this is the first one. It's um, about the Locke family, um, which it consists of like um, the mother and father, Nina and Rendell Locke, and their children, Kinsey and Tyler, and then a six year old boy named Bodie. And their father is brutally murdered. And then he, um, it's his like wish, like if anything happened to him, like, they would go live with the, their uncle in Key House, which is in Lovecraft, Massachusetts, because he knew, knows that they will be safe there. And the Key House is a very unique, it's kind of been in the family for years. And um, there's all these keys that just do kind of crazy, weird things. And, um, when you, like, only children, like, once you're an adult, you don't remember the keys. Like, you don't remember the power they have. And so it's, um, the youngest one, Bodhi, he's the one that's kind of finding all these keys, and no one believes him. And, um, but then, like, his older brother and sister, like, they start to believe him. And, um, an evil power is unleashed, and they have to find a way to stop that evil. And then, like, it kind of, throughout the series, it kind of goes, um, um, back in time because it shows that like when his their father was a teenager like him and his friends had a big role in like everything that's going on and um, the evil that is now kind of terrorizing them um, but it's um it's really brutal like when I was like flipping through it like it's it's a very brutal series but what I love about this is that you care about the characters um, it's funny, there's like really kind of heartbreaking moments because um, I read it and I watched an interview with Joe Hill apparently he was he kind of did this out of like he was sick of like slashers where it's just you don't care like you're rooting for the killer more than anyone else so he kind of wanted to do a thing where you care about the people then in the end he starts killing them off <laughs> but um, it's a lot of fun I'm gonna show um, like, all of the keys are, like, amazing. Like, this kind of goes with my love of, like, um, creepy old houses, like, Victorian houses and keys. Because I, I love the idea of, like, a key that opens a doorway to, like, a magical world. Like, I'm, like, I'm just fascinated with that type of thing. Um, there's a key that, um, unlocks, like, everyone has a keyhole on the back of their head. And it unlocks their head and they could, like, see everything inside their head. And people could, like, you, they could take things out, put things in. And this is what it looks like on the inside of the little boy's head. So yeah, it's like lots of innocent things, but if you like look closely, like that's kind of like a crude child drawing of the people that murdered his dad. So it's kind of like there's some traumatic memories like hidden in there. And that's his brother and sister like looking in the head and that's him like standing between them, like looking into his own head, which freaked them out. Um, and then, um, 
this is like I, I totally geek out over this like I have a tattoo inspired by this um I got this when I was 18 when I first uh got settled into my college dorm like, I was like once I get settled I'm gonna go get a tattoo because there's a tattoo shop within walking distance which is actually really dangerous but yeah this is one of, one of my tattoos um this is the shadow key like you put it into a crown and you get to control the shadows which depending on who's using it it, it could be used for like good or evil but this guy like that's the crown and this guy is obviously using it for evil <laughs> um then he kind of uses that and then kind of uses the shadows to terrorize everyone but um this show is actually um in uh it's had multiple pilots made for it um the first pilot was made in 2011 for fox but and it had like jesse mccartney as the older brother and like miranda otto from lord of the rings and sabrina the chilling adventures of sabrina as the mom but apparently it was too good so fox decided not to make it but that that's all was well but um several years later um they made a pilot like the director of the new, the remake of It, like the adaptation of It, directed another pilot for Hulu, and they decide not to make that either. But right now, um, Netflix is currently having a whole season film. Like they got green light for a whole season, so it's it's happening. Like we're finally getting a season, and it's going to be really awesome because Netflix, they could have as much violence and gore and kind of really do it justice. I think the showrunner is Carlton Cuse, who did Lost and Bates Motel, so I have, like, high hopes for that, because I loved Bates Motel. And, um, but yeah, but, like, to kind of show some of the other keys. Yeah, it's like there's lots of really fun stuff. So I'm going to actually flip through one of these, and I'm, I apologize if there's anything, like, grotesque that shows up. But yeah, it's like, it's such an awesome series. And um, there actually are replica keys, which I do have some of, um, which I will show them. I got this one from eBay, but um, this is the ghost key. It um, There's a door in the house that when you unlock it and you go through, um, your body kind of falls down dead and you can kind of wander around as a ghost, but you can always go back through the door to your body. But the little boy, this is the first key he discovers, and then he kind of goes exploring as a ghost, and no one believes him. But you kind of spy on people with this. Um, and then this one is the Anywhere key. Um, open any door with it and go anywhere you want. Like, the big bad in the series definitely wanted this from the get-go. Because, like, this one's, like, very fragile absolutely love that one now this next one um doesn't exist in the main series but it's like there's so many keys that like they could easily go back and like create more stories this is the biblio key i don't know what it does but um it was they created this for kind of like a charity fundraiser and i got like a special edition of joe hill's heart shape box and i got this with it and then the most recent one i got is the omega key and this one is it opens the black door, which could unleash lots of evil onto the world, and this is the one that the big bad definitely wants to get hold of in the series. But I highly recommend it. Recommend it. Like I could probably geek out about this series for like a long time. It's really awesome, and it's um, the fact that I still love it this much is like probably a good thing because I do have a tattoo that I'm stuck with for now. Um, but I'm really excited about the series and. Uh, it definitely has like reread potential. Like Audible actually did um, a audio production of the entire series. It's like you, you, and it has like a full cast. Like it has like Haley Joel Osment or like Tatiana Maslany on it, and um, it's thirteen hours and complete. It has all six volumes, and um, it has kind of like a narrator. So kind of like then there's lots of sound effects, and um, so it's like you. Could, it's I feel like. I've, I listened to it knowing, like, I've read the books, and I feel like 
it's nothing beats actually having the illustrations in front of you, but it's a, it's a lot of fun because they kind of have to like edit it a bit so it kind of flows because it's like you're kind of like trying to like show like what's going on with like audio when you would be like looking at pictures. But I thought it was pretty exact. Yeah, but I absolutely love this and I highly recommend it. And if you stuck with me for through all that geeking out, I appreciate it. And I, I feel like I'm probably gonna talk about books that I've read recently, but then I might, if I'm in the mood, I might like kind of have a spotlight where I'm, I talk about something that I absolutely love. Um, that's all I have for now. Um, my next video probably won't be until after StitchCon because I have a class starting up soon and it's like lots of busy stuff and I don't know if I'll have anything to talk about until after that because I don't know how much I'm going to stitch. But if you're coming to StitchCon, um, I'd be more than, like I'm excited to meet everyone. I tend to kind of be really shy until like I start to like warm up to people. Um, so yeah, just like come up and say hi. I can't wait to meet everyone. But yeah, um, that's all I have. Um, Till next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>